So I've been given real thought to who has the most to gain or lose in some of the biggest games of the season in 2024 because, well, it's July and that's who I am and that's what I do. And I settled on the Vegas kickoff for today because, well, it's LSU versus UCLA, or excuse me, not UCLA, my gosh. It is LSU versus USC. I think I said that because LSU has UCLA and USC on their 2024 schedule, and obviously I'm very excited to watch them play for, you know, the LA City Championship, maybe be able to take that thing away from both of those schools in the same year. And if there is a team that is capable of beating SC, well, it's not just LSU, but certainly could be LSU to start the season because they're very talented. Like, let's start with the negatives and get to the positives about LSU, and we'll do the same thing with SC. But I think off the rip, they were 10-3 and last year, and they were god-awful defensively. Now, a lot of the reason why they went 10-3, and and frankly, the reason that the, they were any good at all, was Jaden Daniels, and, and more to the point, it's not just Jaden Daniels, it was Mike Denbrock and Jaden Daniels. Like, he turned Jaden Daniels into the kind of dude that I hadn't seen in the previous four years, so much so that I'm still kind of getting the willies, thinking about whether or not the guy I saw last year who was able to put up 600 yards of offense by himself was simply a mirage, or is that just who Jaden Daniels is? Has he taken the leap? Has he become one of the great quarterbacks that we're going to see from this generation and, and frankly from his recruiting class because it didn't always look like it was going to go that way for him but again they're without him and they're without Denbrock who's gone to Notre Dame so we get to find out whether or not Notre Dame uh, is getting a talisman in Mike Denbrock for Wiley Leonard to be their offensive play caller or if that was just a magical year I'm inclined to go with the magical year because I saw this with Mark Whipple at Pittsburgh, when it had when he had Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison on the same team, say nothing of Brennan Marion being a wide receivers coach on that team, but I I I I got a hard time saying you're going to run that back with Riley Leonard, who I just want to see stay healthy the rest of the season and on a decent Notre Dame team because Notre Dame, remember, they had a guy in Sam Hartman who we thought was going to be the dude to push them over the top, had you know set the record for most passing TDs by an ACC quarterback at Wake Forest and then chose to go to Notre Dame, and it didn't quite go so well. I mean, it went fine, right? Uh, they won nine games, and they ended up not playing for a national championship, which is what they were shooting for at Notre Dame, but you can't lose to Louisville and, and get that done. Like, it's just not – it's going to be difficult for you to do such a thing. Now, back to LSU. Um, the thing that really upsets me about LSU last year is that they just couldn't stop anybody when they need to stop people. And I wrote down some of the scores – that they had given up in games that they won and lost last year. So uh, uh, going back to the ReliaQuest Bowl actually seemed decent for them, and, and Wisconsin was able to score more than 30 on them. But LSU gave up 28 or more last season to A&M, scored 30, right? Arkansas scored 31. Florida scored 35. Missouri scored 39. Alabama scored 42. Florida State scored 45. And Ole Miss scored 55, and yet they still managed to win 10 games. Reminds me a lot of what Lincoln Riley's teams used to be like uh, at Oklahoma and what they can't seem to really shake at uh, SC because, well, defense has always been the thing that is holding back a Lincoln Riley team so much so that I'm thinking maybe it's just that Lincoln needs to be the guy uh, that is slowing down the offense and not so much going temple and trying to score on every play to give the defense an opportunity to catch a break and or a breather, but that's just not what he's going to do because that's not how he got here. And I understand that as a guy who wants to lean in on the things that got you there. You want to play to your fundamentals. You want to play to your strengths. You want to basically be good at what you're good at and then make everybody else catch up. Personnel is going to be good. It's going to be fine, if not decent to, to, to great on both sides of the ball with Blake Baker, who's going to be the defensive coordinator for LSU. And I think Blake's an outstanding guy coming from Missouri. He's going to get Harold Perkins back into what I think is his much more natural position, which is uh, coming off the edge, pass rushing, I, I hope, because that dude was special in 2022 and not so special in 2023. And then they got two of the best offensive tackles in the game in Emory Jones Jr. and Will Campbell. Will Campbell might be one of the five best players in the sport going into this year and certainly has an opportunity to be uh, an All-American at tackle at LSU. And then Garrett Nussmeyer, who also featured on the show, you can find that one if you dig further enough on the uh, on the channel, to see that 
That dude does not lack any sort of confidence, and he's got tremendous amounts of character, and he loves to sling the rock all over the field. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for LSU fans to watch him if they haven't already because, well, that's just who that dude is. Like, he, he wants to sling the rock. Uh, he's going to have opportunity to sling it to guys like Kyron Lacey, and I think going into this year, you're going to find out a lot about what LSU is made of in this USC game, and the same is true frankly, for USC. Like, that's a team that really needs to get off on a good foot against this LSU team with a win because their schedule does not get any easier as they go into their first year of Big Ten competition. And USC is still one of those programs that prides itself on, I think it's the last FBS program, to not schedule an FCS opponent at any part of the year. Uh, Notre Dame gave that up when they scheduled Tennessee State, but... It's getting it's getting tough, uh, or it was getting tough to keep that up. I don't think it's going to be so tough to keep that up anymore because the 12-team college football playoff uh, is going to extend opportunities to teams like LSU and USC who might lose this game. One of them is going to lose this game in Vegas and still have an opportunity to make it with uh, an at-large bid from the college football playoff selection committee. And given what their schedules look like, given the opponents that they're probably going to face and the, the ranked teams that they're going to face, you know, uh, I can get it. I can get there. I understand how a close game between these two doesn't end yet at all. But first, for LSU, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put, you you gotta put a lid on the defense, right? Like that's difficult to do against anybody if you're LSU, but particularly against a team like Lincoln Riley's USC, who, as I'm working through the 134, like I think that's a top 25 team. We're still really wrestling with why I think what I think and what, if anything, there is to say about it and as far as why USC would be a preseason top 25 team for me. But it, I think you start with it's just Lincoln Riley. It's like betting on Kalen DeBoer in as a top 10 team with Alabama. We don't really have a lot to go on there except that Kalen DeBoer has won everywhere he has gone and at a place like, uh, well, at a place like Alabama, that's that's the standard. They're, they're going to expect you to win, my guy. And I think that given the talent that, re that he uh, returns and the talent that he added, they're going to be in just fine. They're going to be just fine. Uh, SC, though, is a little bit different because most of Lincoln Riley's success has been built on his quarterback identification and getting those guys to play at the highest level of their intelligence, which I got to tell you is not the easiest thing to do in the world. Like, it's... You're finding out what your guy is good at, and then you're giving him opportunities to do it over and over again. But if anybody has been able to do that here of least recent, it's been Lincoln Riley, right? Like, you think about what he is able to do with guys with totally different skill sets in some places like Baker Mayfield and Jalen Mil uh, Jalen Mil Jalen Hurts. You understand he'll find a way to make whomever his starting quarterback is look really good. Now, he had Caleb Williams the last couple of years, and most people would tell you Caleb Williams is the best college football player in the sport. He's got a Heisman Trophy to show for it, but the thing that is eluding both Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley is a national championship, right? And uh, not for nothing, they both had opportunities in the college football playoff, and, and they are mostly at these jobs that they have now, LSU and SC, because they felt like they couldn't get it done at Oklahoma or Notre Dame, and those of us that know about Oklahoma or Notre Dame and those of us that are fans of Oklahoma or Notre Dame will be like, dog, that's got way more to do with you than it does with us because we be winning championships. That's that's a you thing you got to figure out. But that's not what they chose to do, right? What they chose to do was uh, try to do it elsewhere, try to, try, to, try to make it happen somewhere else. And I'm – I hope it goes well for them because I want the best for them, but I also – feel some kind of way about being an Oklahoma fan thinking somebody wants to leave me for SC. But that that now I'm getting away from the topic. And it's really, for, for USC, I think we're going to find out whether or not it's Jaden Maiala or Miller Moss. Now, Miller Moss might be a flash in the pan, but what he showed against uh, at Louisville and the Holiday Bowl, I just wanted him to do it again and again and again. Because if that's the guy that was waiting in the wings – I understand why Malachi Nelson decided to transfer to Boise State because at the time I'm like, why would you leave this? Why would you go away, my guy? Like, you're going to be the starter. And then Miller Moss went out there and tow up Louisville. Just, just tow him right up. And in doing so, 
kind of scared off anybody else that might want to come there, right? Like that was, that was the thing. I thought for sure that Will Howard, who's at Ohio State, was going to end up at USC because he fits that kind of Jalen Hurts mold that, well, we'd seen – we, we'd seen Lincoln Riley do really great things with. As a matter of fact, I didn't think that Lincoln Riley was going to be able to turn Jalen Hurts into a player until such a time as that's exactly what he did. Like, he, he absolutely turned that dude into uh, the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy and rode that dude into the college football playoff against LSU. Now, it's a different LSU than it was, but you get the point. Like, a different head coach and whatnot. I think if you are Lincoln Riley, you really want to get this one. You want to do it well. You want to do it your way. But Maiva is interesting as a backup. Maybe he's going to compete and win the job. We'll see. But he had 3,000 passing yards uh, and 17 TDs at UNLV last year running Brendan Marion's go-go offense. And that ain't a simple offense to run. It's certainly not a simple offense to execute unless you have dudes. And Maiva had at least one in Ricky White the third, who was all he down there somewhere with uh, – uh, man, that dude had like – eight TDs and like 1,300 yards receiving. Like, that team was fun to watch last year, and they were good. So I think Maiava is also a good running threat, and I don't know that that's what you're going to get from a guy like Miller Moss. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm shorting our guy Miller just a little too much. But I I, I, I just want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to see it. I also want to see if Zachariah Branch becomes a bigger part of the offense uh, in y this year because, like, that dude could do anything he wanted and Lincoln was playing coy about just what he was capable of when he had him, but I mean, uh, was capable of last year when I talked to him. And then we got to see he's one of the great all-purpose players in the sport. He might win the Paul Hornick Award. I mean, it's going to be tough to beat Travis Hunter in a consecutive year because Travis Hunter goes both ways, but if anybody is capable of doing it, it's probably him uh, along with a guy like say, Omega Buka, who's also going to get those opportunities. Barry and Brown at Kentucky, who's a, a stud in and of himself. I think both of those guys have the goods to take it. And if you are going to try to build an offense that is going to take advantage of LSU being too fast uh, off the edge or getting upfield, it's going to be with guys going left and right and up and down like Zachariah Branch. Now, USC's schedule, it features, again, not just LSU, but opponents that combined to go 106-53 and 53 in 2023. And, uh, I mean, they they play nine teams that were ranked in 23, and 11 of those won at least one game against a ranked opponent. So it, it's a gauntlet run in 23. But also, bear in mind this. If you are a USC fan and you want to feel good, if you're an LSU fan and you just haven't, haven't had enough feeling bad – Lincoln Riley has coached 92 games as a head coach since 2017, become the head coach at Oklahoma. And in those 92 games, he is 45-4 and four when his offense, or I should say the team, scores 40 points or more. And he has seen his team score 40 points or more 48 times in those 92 games, which is a remarkable rate. So if you are LSU... Just keep Lincoln Riley and SC under 40. And if you are USC, make sure you score at least 40. So that is the one statistic that you can boil this entire thing down to.